set up our forceps and our needle in such a way that a straight gross motor movement will allow the needle to enter the cornea 0.8 to 1.0 millimeters from the graft edge, exit the edge of the graft at a depth of at least 80 percent, and do so along an axis exactly radial to the graft. The following slides will show the setup steps that allow this to occur. First, the surgeon has to look at the cornea and identify the plane that is radial to the graft edge, and then identify the exact positions where the surgeon plans the needle to enter and exit the corneal graft. The first step is placing the needle parallel to the host cornea. This position is the neutral needle holder position for most of the needling we will do on host and graft. Neophytes cannot always tell when they are not parallel to the corneal surface, and so we teach them this strategically important position before they move the needle to the graft surface. The next step moves the needle to the graft along the radial line perpendicular to the graft edge and maintains the same needle position parallel to the graft surface. The needle then remains stationary until we properly position the forceps. Precise forceps positioning is the most important skill the neophyte must learn, so we will spend a lot of time on this slide. First, we separate the two tips of the forceps to make sure the tips are parallel to the radial line along which we propose to pass the needle. Next, we ensure that the two tips are angled at an approximately 45 degree angle relative to the surface of the cornea. Next, we walk the inferior tip down the edge of the graft until we are just above the deep margin. The resident can judge the depth of the tip once they learn how to look through the cornea from the surface and note how the resolution of the tip blurs as it moves deeper and deeper down the graft edge. Next, the resident gazes at the deep forceps tip to make sure that it stays perfectly still while the top tip moves to engage the surface of the graft. Since one has oriented the forceps tips at a 45 degree angle, the line between the forcep tips is the hypotenuse of an isosceles triangle. The wound edge of most grafts is 800 to 1,000 microns, so the distance to the surface forcep tip from the wound margin should also be the same distance, and that distance is the distance from the edge of the graft we want our needle to enter. At this point, you've positioned the forceps in such a way that describes the intended point of entry and exit of the needle while also ensuring that the needle will pass along the intended radius. You've also set things up so that if the needle comes in too flat, it will hit the deep forceps tip and give the negative feedback that tells the surgeon to reorient the line of the needle's passage so that it goes under the deep forceps tip. Now we're ready for the needle. Confirm the needle is oriented along the radial axis described by the two tips. Rotate the needle so that it is oriented at a 45 degree angle relative to the surface. The same as the tips of the forceps. The needle enters the cornea as close to the top tip as possible. Barely engage the cornea and pause so that your eye has a chance to look at the angle of the needle to make sure that it is not too shallow so that it will hit the bottom tip or so steep that it will drive through and through the cornea before it reaches the wound margin. The needle movement should be a straight line drive with no use of wrist or supination of the hand, a straight drive. When performed correctly, the surgeon feels an even smooth movement through the cornea and cannot help but have the proper length, depth, and radiality because proper setup and execution guarantees that result. Once the needle is through the edge, don't let go because you want the length of the needle exiting the deep wound margin to be approximately the length of the proposed insertion into the host cornea. Now we will review the steps in text form on this page and the next. So take your time, study this page,
and this page. In the following slides, we'll show you the same information, but at high speed to make it into an animation. at the component parts of the final product we wish to achieve. The needle is radial to the host margin. The needle is deep in the host and parallel to the posterior host surface and engaged 0.8 to 1.0 millimeters from the edge of the host wound. The best way to ensure that the needle will end up parallel to the deep surface of the host is to start with the needle parallel to the anterior surface of the host. Also confirm that it is in the proper radial position and that 0.8 to 1.0 millimeters of needle is exiting the graft edge. It takes some time for the residents to learn how to confirm the needle is actually parallel to the anterior surface, but once they acquire that skill, all they have to do is gradually walk the needle down the host wound margin until one is just superior to the deepest position of the host edge. We identify depth with two visual cues. The first cue is the same cue we used with the forcep tip on the deep graft margin. Namely, we look through the cornea, watching the resolution of the view of the needle blur until one knows one is deep. The second cue is one can see the front surface of the graft become flush with the front surface of the host. As soon as you have that position, engage the needle into the host wound edge, but just a bit. Keep your gaze on the needle tip to make sure it remains stationary. Why don't we just drive through? Because the host has to be stabilized with the forceps before the drive to make sure the host doesn't wobble and lead to a non-deep and or non-radial needle passage. We stabilize the host with the two tips of the forceps. The maneuver is the same as we used earlier on the graft side. One tip engages deep down the wound edge and the other engages at a 45 degree angle along the intended radius of passage. Once you have that set up, the needle will drive accurately without any effort because there's nowhere else it can go. And once you have done that, you can look through the cornea and confirm that you are deep and radial and confirm that the needle is engaged the proper length relative to the wound margin. If the drive is a little long, one can just slide the needle slightly back through its passage until it is the length that you wish. So let's review the steps in word form. In the following slides, we'll show you the same information, but at high speed to make it into an animation. In earlier videos, we learned how to drive the needle through the graft and how to drive the needle through the host so that it was deep, radial, and parallel to the posterior host surface. Now we want to learn how to drive the needle up to the surface at as close to a right angle as possible and in such a fashion that it exits the surface 0.8 to 1.0 millimeters from the edge of the host wound. How do we accomplish this goal? 
First, we use the needle holder to rotate the tip of the needle 90 degrees on its axis from its initial position parallel to the host posterior surface. Once that rotation occurs, we don't drive the needle to the surface with the needle holder. Rather, we drive the cornea into the needle with the Calibri. The Calibri is positioned on the host surface in a T position where the Calibri is perpendicular to the axis of the needle and the needle tip is halfway between the two edges of the end of the Calibri. Note that the Calibri is also positioned about a millimeter from the host edge. Press down and actually cornea the needle instead of needling the cornea. If you have all your positions correct, it can only exit exactly where you plan to exit and should have the correct depth, length, and radiality. So to review and text, and in animation. Our goal is to obtain good tissue approximation, neither too loose or too tight, at the wound margin. We want that proper compression to occur as soon as the first throw of the knot is complete. The second and final throws will lock it in permanently. So how do we do that? As we pull this suture through the wound, we want the entire length of the suture to orient on the same plane as the suture that is passed through the cornea. We pull the needle side of the suture through on that line until the opposite end of the suture reaches the opposite corneal limbus. Then, we cut the suture about four millimeters from where it exits the host cornea. This maneuver gives the student the proper length of suture for tying. Next, pull the suture through the wound until four millimeters of suture is left on the graft side of the wound. Next, we make what we call the T. We place the long portion of the suture on the host and place it perpendicular to the short graft suture. The long suture should point towards the non-dominant hand and the two ends should intersect where the short suture enters the graft. This T position will be the same for every suture you place around the graft perimeter. We'll spend a lot of time on this next slide which shows the starting position for the two tying forceps. The straight forceps is held in the non-dominant hand. It should be oriented perpendicular to the graft surface and grabs the end of the long suture at its tip. The suture should exit the straight tying forceps perpendicular to the forceps. That perpendicular positioning keeps the first few millimeters of the nylon suture straight and makes it much easier to curl around the curved forceps later. The holder should be parallel to the long suture, and the tips of the suture should be in a grab position just to the right of the short suture. We just gave you a lot of information, so let's study it in text form here. To start to tie, move the straight tying forceps to the short suture, but keep the curved tire in position. Place three loops around the curved tire. Gently separate the tire tips and press the side of the inferior tip into the graft surface until the short suture slides over the lower tip. Then slide the curved forceps up the short suture until you reach the tip of the suture and grab there. Then move the short suture towards the host side of the wound. Do it on a line parallel to the suture that is through the graft host interface and pull gently so there's still slack in the system. And now make a series of stop and go tugs that pull the same amount on the short and long suture. And between tugs, observe the wound edge to see if it is starting to compress. When the wound shows the compression you want, 
put mild tension on the long suture, put mild tension on the short suture, and move the short suture toward the graft parallel to the long suture. Then pull hard on both the long and the short suture to lock the first throw into place so it cannot tighten or loosen. Then lay the short suture on the corneal surface. When you let go of the short suture, keep the curved tire perpendicular to the short suture in a pickup position. Place the straight tire perpendicular to the short suture in the same T position as you used for the first throw. Loop and grab the short suture at its tip. Then pull with the same tension on both the long and short suture. Equal tension on both the long and the short will make a circle of the loop and will keep it over the first throw of the knot. Pull gently on both ends until the knot is secure. Then make the T again to start the third throw and go through the same steps you used to do the second throw and the knot is complete. And now we will run through the slides quickly to make it an animation.